Well, we've come a long way, but now we can finally start recomposing. Uh, I have to maybe kill a sacred cow or two, because composing does not necessarily mean being creative in the sense of always having to be original. Composing literally means putting things together. So what we're going to do is put our snippets and our skeletons together and see if we can make music out of these. This is a little bit like learning to walk with crutches, and I'm not suggesting you should walk with crutches all your life. As moment you feel free from this, of course, by all means, go off in your own direction. So here we are. We're going to look at our snippets and our cr and our skeletons, and put this into a phrase. I've chosen snippet number fourteen from my list. Then here's twenty-six, and here's twenty-eight. Now this has been done almost at random, but I have a certain sense of certain repeats as a good idea. And it's always a good idea to see that the thing rhythmically makes some sort of sense. So do you want a long note probably at the end of the phrase? That's 18, and here's 14 again. Here's 18 and 12. 26. 14. And 1. And 26. And 33 to end up with. Those are my snippets thrown together, just as I had them in C major. Now I transpose them into D major and make sure they fit my harmony, which means putting things up or down as necessary, just making sure it always fits the harmony. choice here in bar 9, well, I didn't like that because I'm, I've, been, I've learned to avoid parallel octaves, and so I changed that slightly, and um, these are my choices now, it's my composition. I can make any choice, any changes I want, but if I'm happy with how my snippets and my skeletons work out, I can then go on, and then having decided well, I want to make a trio out of this for, say, two clarinets and a bassoon. Well, I've already got my first clarinet part and I've got my bassoon part. So all I need now is to fill in the harmony with a second clarinet. So I'm really very close to the end now. I orchestrate this. I add marks of tempo. I add marks of dynamic and articulation. These last, this last step is what composers usually forget to do because, of course, they know how the piece should sound and they forget that other people don't. So please do be careful. Add marks of articulation, add marks of dynamic and uh, a tempo so that people have something to go by. I've also then made a, made a little cut in this, so I've made a little caesura, as we call it, and I've made a repeat sign, so after four bars I go back to the beginning, and then I can repeat the second half of the song as well. So then, of course, I have something very similar to the Mozart tune, for which we already have written some variations. You can use variations on this as well. Please feel free to use it for your own material. This is as far as we're going now. I'm just going to end with my highly talented friend over here who is going to play this on his with two clarinets and a bassoon. Congratulations, 
We are now through the basic steps of breaking the ice with composing, or at least learning to compose. There's lots and lots of material to go with all of this written material and lots of exercises for you to try out, but you may feel you don't even want any of this. If you can already do this, by all means feel free to move on. For some of you, it'll be far enough and you can use, use all of this material as much as you like to make your own compositions. If you want to go further, the next stages are going to be composing a song in the style of Schubert, and then arranging and orchestrating. Finally, we look at more contemporary styles. Music has come a long way since the days of Mozart. There are lots of things that have happened that we can use in our compositions. But we don't have to. There's an awful lot of very good music that still can be composed in C major.